You guys can have a seat. Hey, on behalf of the family and Alexa and Michael, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, thanks for sharing your lives up to this point with us. You know, it may seem like a small investment from you, but uh, to us, we really appreciate it. It's, it's huge what you've meant to, to them and to their family. And so I want to ask, you know, your invitation was basically in itself a thank you. But also, um, hey, please continue to be a part of their lives, support them, love them, encourage them um, for the next months, years, the rest of their life. We get to spend this together. All right, I know you guys are excited about tonight, and we got a time schedule to keep. So let's get this on the show, show on the road. All right, who gives this girl to be to this guy? I do. All right, so if you know these two, um, I mean, we joke about it all the time, but if you, you know Michael loves Mickey Mouse and Disney, and Alexa loves Harry Potter. So they love stories, and so I figured there's no better way than to start out in story form, all right? So once upon a time, there was a serious little boy, we'll call him Mickey, and there was an intense little girl we'll call Hermione. They were on completely different journeys, separated by space and time. Space because she grew up, or Hermione grew up on the rough streets of those muggle streets of LP, and Mickey grew up in the vanilla frosted streets of the Haven. <laughs> separate schools with separate friends. Time, well, let's just say there's a time difference. <laughs> little did they know that in the spring of 1992, while Hermione was a little five-year-old princess watching her little chief Mickey was, well, TBD. Something happened that would forever change their history, their stories. A young couple from the wild land of Indiana started a small church in Down River called South Point. At some point, Hermione finds a group of friends at this church, and the little princess had now become a wizard of cheer. For all the muggles out there, that meant she became a cheerleader for her classmates. And her favorite spell became, I'm going to punch you in the face. Don't let it fool you, it was a spell of love that she would cast on everyone around her. At home, her little chief was growing bigger, and the two of them were the best of friends. While this new group of friends, she began to find a new peace and a calm that she hadn't had before. She began to grow in her courage and confidence, and she found a new talent. She became a voice wizard. For the muggles out there, that means she can sing. She could make her voice sound like a rapper, or JT, unfortunately. Or she could elicit fear, even short in stature in others. She could also sound like an angel. She developed nicknames like Lex the Mex, Lexi, the girl that's going to punch you, Fun Sucker, the Dorm Nazi, the Doubter of Mark in the Petri Dish, <laughs> and many, many more. But she, she had a new and extended family. Now, Mickey had a different path, a very serious boy who made his first spreadsheet at the age of seven for the Christmas... <laughs> For the Christmas gifts he wanted from Santa. <laughs> Somewhat shy, this little serious boy grew up in the happiest of families, each year making their annual pilgrimage to their happy place together. And at some point, this little boy grew out his long locks of hair, learned the guitar, and became a rocker. Around the age of 10, his family found their way to this place called South Point as well. Mickey was shy and stayed in his little mouse house, but received an invitation from, we'll call him Benny the Duck, <laughs> to play in the band. The serious little shy rocker became, was becoming con connected with a new group of friends. And this is where the story begins to change. The journeys begin to converge. It was through these connections where Mickey and Hermione would eventually meet, first meet, and it wasn't love at first sight or second sight or third or fourth or... Fifth, it took a while for their lives to truly converge, but one thing that was constant was Jesus. And now we're going to step back into reality instead of a fairy tale. Listen, if you know these two, they're not exactly peas in a pod. Michael loves spreadsheets. Lexi likes to put it all out there. Michael likes vanilla, and if there was an ice cream called crazy, Alexa would probably like it. <laughs> Alexa loves playing games and cards. Michael likes spreadsheets and to shoot stuff. <laughs> Alexa loves groups of people and talking. Michael likes 
spreadsheets and to shoot stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa loves Justin Timberlake, and I'm glad you don't. <laughs> Alexa likes hip hop, used to like rap, probably still kind of does. And Michael likes rock music and the kind of music without words. Yes, Alexa is slightly older than Michael, or Michael is slightly younger than her. And for some people, that's all we see, the differences. But I want to highlight some of the things that I see as well, partly because of their families, but in large part because of what Jesus has and is doing in your lives. Alexa and Michael serve. They serve others. And now they get to serve together. It's not something they have to do or out of obligation. It's something they choose and have a desire to do. Michael always wants the teams around him to be set up to win. He even talks about people coming to Christ more than he does about guns some days. <laughs> Alexa started helping in a small group in high school, and ever since then, there have been a lot of changes in her life and at the church, and yet she remained faithful, not for the leaders, but for Jesus. So many young girls look up to her and go to her as a mentor or like an older sister. Alexa loves to tell people what to do. She just has a knack for it. And Michael isn't exactly Mr. Upfront. And yet when you watch them, Alexa listens and respects, and Michael values and loves. They both have adorable little quirks. Alexa has the machine gun silent sneezes, a-choo, a-choo, a-choo. And so many phrases, honest to goodness, I'm going to be honest with you, and douche. Michael loves to slap his knee and is more comfortable holding a knife or gun than putting his arm around a family member. <laughs> and his go-to phrase and move, dang it, accompanied with a knee slap. <laughs> They're both hard workers. Alexa may like to play and have fun, but she works and always has. And Michael may be young on paper, but he works like a man with a mission and a purpose. They both have strong and loving families, not perfect because there's no such thing, but they both knew they were loved. They both have a great supporting cast of friends and mentors in their lives that they can go to. And they both seek out counsel from those people, unlike many who are foolish and don't ask for help. And that's just a few. But the one thing, the real reason why this marriage is a good one and will last is because the one thing that brought you together, not a church, but Jesus. Marriage today has become synonymous with a piece of paper, a legal document. Marriage has nothing to do with that especially in the beginning. God in Genesis created marriage. When he created Adam and Eve, they had sex, and God said it was good, and they were, he was going to do something with that union. He said the two shall become one flesh. A document can't do that. A government can't make two into one. Actually, it's literally physically impossible. And yet that's exactly what God said marriage was. The two shall become one, which meant they no longer had two separate lives, two separate purposes, two separate families, or two separate dreams. They became one. And the rest of their earthly life was about learning how to be one. The greatest tool that they now had as a married couple was their marriage. Marriage was never about getting something for yourself, about getting, uh, finally getting to enjoy sex, about having a partner, about making babies or having a family. It was to experience on earth a little taste of God's selflessness and Jesus' humility. Today, most people think of marriage as mutually beneficial agreement where we both get what we want, but marriage was actually created to lose our lives and become one with another. It was about sacrifice, not greed. It was about others, not me. When marriage becomes about two people getting what they want, it's really a waste of the gift that God has given us. The two become one, but in their oneness, oftentimes people try to live two separate lives, competing with each other, which brings all the focus on themselves instead of God. Alexa sought out counsel from a few people she loved and trusted when entering in this relationship with someone who seemed so different from the outside. What wisdom and maturity to seek counsel, especially in matters of the heart. While everyone was looking on the outside, Jesus had shown them both something else, something he had planned and been doing for a long time, your entire life. See, life isn't about us. It's about God. You two know this, and now you have a partner to tell others about him with. You two get to spend the rest of this earthly life together. Like Scripture says, there are many reasons why two can be better than one, but really the only way that two are better than one is if they become one in Christ, one in mission and purpose. You see, God established marriage to be a light, to be another way for his people to demonstrate the world, to the world what it looks like, Matthew 5, 16, right? In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. It's about him, not us. God talks about love and marriage quite a bit, but we know the best picture is in Ephesians chapter 5. We talked about it a lot. 
Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. The focus is on Christ, right? Not the marriage itself. Marriage isn't isn't the end, it's just a tool. A tool for us to experience God's love and to show the world what his love looks like. The more we focus on each other and not on God, the more we cheapen it and misuse it. And as daunting as this may seem, don't be afraid. Because if you've given your life to Christ and have been immersed in baptism, then we know we've been forgiven of our sins, but also we've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? And the Holy Spirit's for us, who can be against us, right? Well, technically, everybody. Everybody might fight for your attention and your time. At times, everybody will try to get you to fix the temporary things without thinking of eternal things, make the temporary things bigger than they are in light of eternity. So when everyone tries to take your focus off of the eternal, off of God, the best thing you can do is to fix your eyes on your author and perfecter of your faith. Point each other back to Jesus. Remember, the goal is to present your spouse before God, spotless, blameless, not to fulfill them, You can't fulfill them, but you can be like Christ to them. Remember, the purpose of marriage is to give us the ability to experience and demonstrate God's love. Remember that song, Bruno Mars, when we came up with all those lines for it? I'd slap your mom for you, all that kind of stuff. Oh, my gosh, we had fun with that. Well, in that line, right, I'd catch a grenade for you. Yeah? Easy to say. He makes millions off of it. Of course, it's easy for him to say. But not not easy to live up to, right? God literally demonstrated his love for us, right, by being beaten and mocked, nailed to a cross, hung there for hours. Romans 5, you see at just the right time when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates, which means he acts. He demonstrates his own love for us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Man, God loved us, didn't he? Sacrificially. He wanted more than anything for you and you to be blameless before God. And he held nothing back. He put it all out there. That's what his love looks like. And that's what our marriages can look like. It's meant to be a reflection of that love. So don't hold back on each other and on sharing God's love with the world. Put it all out there. People ask, I say this at every wedding, people ask Cindy and I, how are you going to stay together, right? Till till you die and all that stuff that we say. And they're going to ask you that. You guys are young, people ask you. There's people in the room. Let's face it, most people today, marriages don't last 20, 30, 40 years or more. Why? How do you know, right? Well, it's not about your emotions. It's not about how much love you have for one another. It's not about the ceremony, as beautiful it is. It's not about what he looks like and what you look like. It's not about any of those things. It's only about the commitment that you're about to make and the strength of Christ. The, the commitment is what, you, what makes it. When you put those rings on, when you make those vows before God, the options are over. You will work it out. You'll fight and you'll work it out. You'll work it out for, your, for yourselves. You'll work it out for your family, for those around you. But most importantly, you'll work it out for your God who demonstrated his love and sacrifice for you. We've only been married for 20 years, Cindy and I. And man, we've made our fair share of mistakes. I'm making the majority, I'm sure. Our wedding was nothing like this. We butchered some of the words that the person told us to repeat. But the same thing that I would tell anyone else is to you guys. The commitment you're about to make is for life. That's the way God sees it, and that's why we do this before God. I know that there are days when I'm not the guy Cindy chose to marry. It can be mean, nasty, ugly person, completely selfish. Very few, of course, but it happens. <laughs> On those days, I'm very thankful that both of us chose 20 years ago. And there's some couples in this room that have been married 40, 50, 60 years. They can tell you even more. On those days, I'm glad we chose to make this commitment before God. So I don't say this to scare you. I say this because I love you. And I'll fight with you and for you. I'm saying this in front of everyone so that everyone can understand we still have a part to play. So fight for it. God says it's like running a race, right? It's a run to win. Marriage is the most beautiful picture of what God's love looks like. I don't have a funny story, but I'm proud of you too. Let's fight for this, okay? One last thing. Honestly, if there's only one thing I could say, it would be this. Oh, wait a minute. Spreadsheet, we're over time. I got to move on. (laughs) All right, so to make sure, because right now this is basically just another church service, Um, make sure on the same place and the same page, and you guys know their actual intentions here today, we want to declare that in front of God and in front of you. So if what I say is accurate, 
accurately depicts what you are, your intentions are, Michael, then just say, I do, at the end of this. You can look at her. Feel free to. So just wait till the end. Michael, do you take Alexa to be your wife? Do you promise to love, adore, and encourage her? Share the good news and achievements as well as the hard times and disappointments. Keep her in sickness and in sorrow and to be loyal to her and to strive to get her first in line when Jesus comes back. I do. Alexa, do you take Michael to be your husband? Do you promise to love, adore, and encourage him? Share the good times and achievements, as well as the hard times and disappointments. Keep him in sickness and in sorrow, and to be loyal to him, and to strive to get him first in line when Jesus comes back. I do. All right, now you'll make solemn vows to each other before God. Michael, you go first. So just this you'll repeat after me. I'll make him real small, so it'll be easy. Today, Alexa. Today, Alexa. I take you to be my wife. I make a commitment to you today. I make a commitment to you today. With God's help, with God's help, I will love and serve you. I will love and serve you. I'm choosing today. I'm choosing today to spend the rest of my life with you. To spend the rest of my life with you. When I have to watch Harry Potter movies. <laughs> when I have to watch Harry Potter movies. And when we get to go to Disney. And when we get to go to Disney. When you want to punch me. When you want to punch me. And when you make spreadsheets for the wedding party. <laughs> and when you make spreadsheets for the wedding party. <laughs> I hope others see his heart and love. I hope others see his heart and love. And the way I care for you. And the way I care for you. All right, Alexa, your turn. Just repeat after me. Today, Michael. Today, Michael. I take you to be my husband. I take you to be my husband. I make a commitment to you today. I make a commitment to be I'm sorry, to you again. today. <laughs> I make a commitment to you today. With God's help. With God's help. I will love and serve you. I will love and serve you. I'm choosing today. I'm choosing today. To spend the rest of my life with you. To spend the rest of my life with you. When I have to listen to you talk about guns. <laughs> when I have to listen to you talk about guns. And when we get to go shopping. And when we get to go shopping. When you shower me with compliments. When you shower me with compliments. And when you say things that I don't like. And when you say things I don't like. Or agree with like the Petri dish. <laughs> or agree with like the Petri dish. I hope others see his heart and love. I hope others see his heart and love. And the way I care for you. All right, so Michael and Alex are now going to each take the smaller candles behind us, which represent the journeys that they've been on, which were separate, and we'll together light the larger candle, and this larger candle represents the coming together of your friends and family uh, through your marriage into one. In the smoke. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great effect. Cool entry right there. <laughs> All right. Now it's time for the rings. Well done. So, as a token of your vows and a symbol to the rest of the world, you will now exchange rings. So, Michael, first, will you give this ring to Alexa and repeat this promise? Just repeat this after me. With this ring, with this ring, I seal my promise. I seal my promise to be your devoted and loving husband. To be your devoted and loving husband. With all that I am, with all that I am, and all that I have, and all that I have, I will always honor you. I will always honor you as long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. Alexa, will you give this ring to Michael and repeat this promise? With this ring, with this ring, I seal my promise. I seal my promise to be your devoted and loving wife. Be your devoted and loving wife. With all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I will always honor you. I will always honor you. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. All right. So you two, you have proclaimed your desire to be married to each other, to your family, and most importantly to God. You've promised vows of love and devotion to each other from the heart. You've given rings to be a reminder to yourself and a symbol to the world of your vows and promises made today, in record time, I might add. <laughs> Therefore, by the power vested in me by the state of Michigan, more importantly as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce that you are husband and wife. Ding, ding, let's get it on. <laughs> Lady.
Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to be the first to present to you Mr. and Mrs. Michael Leach.